Every week, for those that visit with us, we count it a privilege. For those that are jo uh, have joined us online, we always want to uh, be able to pray with and for you. And if you've got a, something that uh, maybe could be a circumstance, it may be an illness, it may be that you just need to feel the closeness of the Lord uh, at this time. Will you? Uh, uh, we, want, we want to be able just to pray with and for you this week. So please slip up your hand if you're online. Just lift your hand up or put your hand on whatever device that you are, uh, that you are listening to us on. And I know that they would uh, uh, that, uh, pray that God will, will hear from the Lord this week in regard to each one. And I know there's several uh, sp specific prayer needs that have been brought to me. Please help us to remember each one here in our prayers. Let's bow if we may at this time. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we have and the opportunity that we have of being together here this morning. It is a privilege to be together. Uh, so many times, I think sometimes we take that for granted. Lord, will you, will you help us? Will you draw us closer to, to one another, but more importantly, Father, I want to be drawn closer to thee. Surround us, Father, with your love, with your presence, with your power. And Lord, as we stand behind this a tree of thanksgiving, Lord, this ought not to be just a time in which that we uh, say thank you at just this month, or maybe on that one specific day. Our hearts ought to be grateful every day, because Father, Without you, we certainly indeed are having a very difficult, difficult time. Because, Father, you've given us everything. Everything we have is yours. So, Lord, we lift those names that we have called, these unspoken prayer needs, all these other names that are on our printed list, we lift them up to you. And ask, Father, that you might just surround every person and every set of different circumstances that they're going through Surround them with your love and with your healing power. And Lord, now as we turn our hearts in the direction of this service, Lord, I pray that your word, not my words, not my voice, but Lord, may your words, whether it's through song or through as we read your word, Lord, I just pray that it's going to come alive and Lord, we're going to be challenged right here where we're at to walk closer to you than we've ever walked before. So, Lord, thank you for this time we have together, this time of worship. And, Lord, as we get ready to uh, take care of one item of business, I just pray, Lord, that you may direct our paths, lead us and guide us and direct us, Father, as we enter conference for just a few moments. And, Lord, that uh, you may direct us and guide us. So, Lord, thank you for this time we have together. Hear our prayers. Every hand that's in and outstretched, hear us, Father and that we might hear from heaven this week in regard to each one. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. If I could have Lewis, would you come up if you would, please? As Lewis is coming, let me share with you uh, that this is Sherry's mother. Sherry, uh, our secretary, uh, her mother is hospitalized there at Monroe. Just keep her in your prayer. She's running a fever and has some, uh, some struggles that, that, she, that they're going through. She had texted us early this morning. So keep her, in, uh, keep her mother in your prayers. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to see you as always. We have one item that needs to come before the church uh, this morning that will be brought to you by Chris Griffin. And uh, in order for us to do that, we have to call this body into session. So at this time, I would like to do that with the first motion. Um, uh, it doesn't require a second one on this. So if you will, uh, I'm going to bring up Chris Griffin, then I'll come back and close it. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, this is coming from the Building and Grounds Committee. Uh, as most of you know, we had a... The catalytic converters were stolen off of our buses several weeks ago, and uh, I was approached about having that building secured up. It's the shed that's out back here on this side. So we got a price to enclose that building with uh, two roll-up doors and one walk-through door to try to deter that from happening again in the future. 
So we're bringing that to the church as a motion. Uh, the cost on that project is about $7,500. No, it's just going to keep somebody a little more honest. If we harden a building and they want it, they're just going to be that more destructive. So this is just, it'll keep the buses out of a line of sight. And um, like I said, just trying to keep somebody a little more honest. It just won't be such an easy target. I'm really surprised that they did what they did. Yes, sir. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, at this time, if there's no further questions on this, uh, it's something we may need to look into. I think we've talked about it a few times in deacons' meetings. I think I've mentioned it to Chris before. And it may be down the road that we may need to go forward and they make cameras that I'm sure a lot of you that deer hunt use that uh, will take pictures automatically, come back to your phone as soon as it's done. Uh, they're not overly expensive and that may need to be something we look at in the next while uh, to put in that position to where if somebody does come up, we may not be able to stop them or get the police there at that time, but you'll have a good picture of them so you'll know who did it. Uh, so at this time, as far as closing in uh, the uh, building for the buses, putting the doors on it. All in favor of making that uh, happen at this time, please signify by raising your hands. <coughs> All opposed? Uh, the motion passes. Uh, at this time, that will take care of all that we have in this business session, so I need a motion to close the meeting. Got it. Uh, that, need me to pray? Say amen. Amen. <laughs> and uh, next, Leon, before you bring anybody else up, if I could get you and Miss Cindy to come forward for just a second. I hate to get you up. <laughs> and y'all have to excuse me. I'm about to have a crown fall off. So oh, no. Oh, no. If it falls in the floor, just pay it. Lord. <laughs> Uh, it'll hit the paper. That Chris I, did, <laughs> I want you to know we appreciate everything that you and Cindy do for the church. You're always there with any situations any member may have or any of their family may have that you're, you're always there to look after us. On behalf of the church, the congregation, I'd like to make a small token of our appreciation for what you do for us. Thank you. I want you to see this. I know where this belongs. <laughs> you don't say anything? Love everybody. She's right, her tooth will fall off. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Right, thank you. Let me once again say we appreciate this church body. Uh, uh, right here's a young lady that she does a lot of work. The things you see online uh, and the filming, uh, the, if you see me film, so several of you mentioned me being up on tractor. She was down down on the ground filming, <laughs> and then she goes home and she uh, uh, put, helps put everything together and get it on. And she's she she has been a real trooper through this whole deal and continues to be. And uh, I appreciate her, but I, I, I appreciate the church uh, uh, so much of how, what you continue to mean to us and the privilege that we have of of serving you. And I do see this as, uh, as this, is, this is our privilege that we get to be part of, of, of this wonderful congregation. And you've made this, and I don't know how many years, we've been here a lot of years. Uh, we turn around, it seems like time has, has, it just flies by. And, uh, but you're very special folks, and for that we say thank you. Thank you for the love offering and the things that you have continued to do for us. If we can help you in any way, we're there for you if we can be there. God bless you. Thank you.
Brandon's going to come up here, and I'm not sure how many, I think, I know a lot of our children are out, but uh, let our boys and girls come up. If you'd like to come up, come up. At this time, parents, if you need to come with them, feel free to do so. And he's going to share a message uh, to these, but also to us here today. That's it. 
Take a guess. I like to hear your guesses. What do you say? Yeah, I am good with preaching. We are small. We are short-handed, so I'm going to trick you today. Come here. <coughs> Mr. Judah is going to pull this chain. It's a monumental task, okay? See? Well, that's good. That's good. Oh, see? My <laughs> broke. Okay? So, see? If Christians, if we want to accomplish a monumental task, all right, take it back. Thank you for ad-libbing with me. We're having fun. A lot of fun. Um, but, excuse me, we didn't have quite the participation today, but I do want us to focus on the fact that Mr. Judah, that's his finish. <laughs> uh, Mr. Judah, that weighs just about as much as he does, was able to pull this large item with a chain that was intertwined with strong links. Each person pulling their own weight. As Christians, we're here to be our best, and we can intertwine to accomplish monumental tasks if we are to lock in together. Austin Grove, we are so blessed. We have a ton of Christians here. But if there is someone that's weak, if there's someone that's down, let's help them become stronger. Thank you for your participation and the ad living. Let us pray. Lord our Father, let us know the power you have in each one of us, Lord. Let us know that if we mesh together, let us know that if we if we combine together man, woman, child, young or old, that we can accomplish monumental tasks in your name. Thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalms 107, the 31st verse says, Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. Let's stand and sing, sing 644, Count Your Blessings.
at this time, Children's Church is being dismissed if you'd like to use that ministry today. Appreciate that message and song. Baxter, I'm on red here, so if you'll kind of motion to me or something or throw something at me if, uh, if I need to stay close to this mic uh, here, uh, uh, here today. If you've got your Bible, let me invite you to turn me to the book of Malachi. Many times we don't hear Malachi except for a, uh, a, not very often. I want you to turn to the first chapter of the book of Malachi. Now, someone asked one time the question, did Malachi know he was going to write the last book in the Bible? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, uh, his writings would have been found on a scroll. They did not have them brought together uh, in uh, such an order. He was a person that, the, as the Lord spoke to him, he would tell the people, Thus saith the Lord. Now, God is still in the business of speaking to us. Uh, I put in the title of the message here today, and in fact, I hope you'll look, you've looked at the cover I will, of your bulletin, I will not honor your second best. Now, I want to challenge us here today to think about this, not just in what happened in Malachi's day, but I want you to think about what, uh, how God is seeing your life and my life, and how he's seeing the lives of us as a society of people, or as as churches also, as bodies of believers, are we giving God all that is due to God? One of the reasons we do a Thanksgiving tree, one of the reasons we wanted to try to bring this to, to light this year was simply, hey, listen, everything I got, or everything every one of us have got, it all came from God. There's not anything that God has not given to us that's not His. So it all belongs to him. The, the Old Testament reminds us and tells us how important it is that we are uh, being mindful of uh, giving back to the Lord. And it's not just monetary as much as it is giving oneself to the Lord. Giving him that which is be the best that we can have. I've, I, I've been... Uh, in high school, a little bit in college, doing a little bit of, in athletics. I've done a little coaching and things in uh, some of the, one of our private schools and uh, in the rec leagues and so forth, getting our kids grown. Thoroughly enjoyed that. I enjoyed not only being able to work with these young people, but I enjoyed being able to get to know the parents and to maybe allow the, the our Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit, uh, to impart to... Uh, the future leaders in our communities, uh, a, a sense of knowing what's right and what's not right or that is ungodly. So important that we begin to realize this. I pulled an old illustration out uh, that uh, you may have heard. Let me just share this little illustration with you if I may at this time. Now, on a rainy Sunday afternoon, a little brother and sister, they were playing Noah and the Ark. An old shoebox was the Ark. The bathtub was their flood. Now, parents, you know that's a nightmare waiting to happen. After the flood was over, they decided to make an offering to God. You remember, that's what Noah did when the waters receded. First thing, build an altar. Offered a sacrifice to the Lord. Now, Noah was a little boy. He said to Mrs. Noah, the little girl, Here, take one of your toy animals as a sacrifice. Immediately, the resounding word of no came forth. Let's use one of yours, your animals, instead of mine. Parents, you ever heard that? Grandparents, you ever heard that? Yes. So when they could not agree, the little girl was going to be the, the peacemaker in the family. And so she ran to a storage room that they had, 
where some of the old toys were, were placed there. And it wasn't just a moment, she came back with a toy lamb. It was dirty. Its head wasn't exactly the way it was when it was new. Its tail was missing. Here she exclaimed to her brother, let's give this as a sacrifice. We're never going to want this again. Her brother agreed, and they made their sacrifice. The little broken lamb they did not want was given to God. Ouch, when I began to think about that illustration, could it be that there are instances in your life and my life that maybe we're expecting God to settle for something less than our best? And that really steps on my toes. I, you've heard me say many times throughout these many years, uh, before something, I say something that goes out to you, it's already, it's bruised me. Because when I start thinking about how true that can be in our lives, that so many times we, maybe we have the tendency, or maybe we're not intentionally doing, I hope we're not, but if we're not careful, we give God something less than our best. You remember the scripture said when talking about, and this was talking about tithing, you know, did God get the last of our crops, the 10% on the, at the very end of the, of the harvest time? No. God got his right at the very beginning, the first. Something to be said, and for you and I to ponder and to think about here this morning, of how important it is to realize that what God is, all he's asking for, he's saying, when you come before me, when you're bringing things to me, and you're bringing yourself to me, be sure that you're not settling, or you're not bringing only yourself halfway. Because it can happen so easily. Now, God was looking down on the earth, at that time, he saw the people, all of their wickedness and their weaknesses. Could that be said of 2022? I think absolutely. God is today, he's looking down upon all of us, and I think certainly indeed he can see some things that God certainly indeed is not pleased with. He's seeing a lot of things that, that we're doing and that we are getting. And one of the things Satan is literally planning on and wants to happen is that you and I become immune to or, or, or inoculated to where it doesn't matter when it comes to serving God, we'll settle. We'll expect God to settle for something other than our best. And folks, that's very scary when we get to that place, that we're allowing the world to dictate to us and to say, God does not deserve our best. As God looked out upon the world in Old Testament times, as well as here in 2022, God certainly did, he sees us just as we are. Not like we, uh, that, and, and he knows those things that are very positive in our life, but he also knows those things that are not. Those things that are according to his will and are aligned with God's will and those things that are not. So certainly, indeed, we've got to be very cautious and very careful uh, of what's going on there. God looked, looked out upon the world and he saw there was no hope. We knew the sacrificial system. That was a system that God had set up to bring. And, and we know that Jesus Christ, as he walked in the temple, and Jesus was in the temple on the Sabbath day. You want to you wanna see a reason for anyone today for us to be sure that we're assembling together and not forsaking that assembling together in God's word? You look at where Jesus Christ was found on the Sabbath day. He was in the synagogue or he was in the temple. He was there worshiping his father, a part of himself, and they are God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one. But Jesus was to be found there. And there were times in which Jesus would take down, particularly Jesus would quote many of the scriptures that would be found in the ancient scrolls and Isaiah and others that were simply were saying about the coming of Jesus. We're only a, a number of weeks away from we're going to celebrate the birth of Christ. Christ come in the flesh, Emmanuel. That Jesus is coming for us. So God had, God looked out upon the people and he knew that there was no hope. There was a lot of darkness. There was a lot of struggles. There were a lot of things that were going on that certainly 
that God was not pleased with and that they, God was receiving something less than the best of His prized creation that He loved and cared for so much they were bringing to Him something that was less than their best. And God certainly was, was not and could not be pleased with that. God knew as He looked upon the people that some sacrifice had to be made. And this wasn't just a haphazard plan, or it wasn't a plan that God would send a part of him in the name of, in the form of Jesus Christ. This was even before the foundation of the world, before the world was created and man and woman was created. God already had the plan laid out because he knew that we were going to fail at, say, at, at obeying what his commandments were and of listening. Even so few of Adam and Eve being there in the, in the garden, they had one thing. The garden was for them to enjoy it all. The best had been given to them, the very best. And yet, God had told them, you stay away from this tree. And what did the devil, as the devil literally came and tempted them? You'll become like God. And slowly but surely, and we're not sure of the timetable, but we know certainly indeed it happened. Lo and behold, what God said do not do, they did. Now, we can't throw stones at Adam and Eve. We, we're there, folks. We all have sinned. We all miss the mark. We all fail our Heavenly Father from time to time. We're doing that which is certainly is not pleasing in God's eyes. Now, God had... God knew that there was going to have to be a sacrifice that was made. So God had many angels that he could have sent to be that sacrifice. But God could not accept that sacrifice. As powerful and great, and as much as he loved the angels that served the Lord still yet to this day and are continuing to serve, and we're going to see some of God's angels one day. If you know Jesus Christ, Angels are going to be with, with God, and we're going to see them. And uh, certainly, indeed, God could have used them, but no. God had chosen something much, much better. And that was Jesus, his only begotten son, to send him in the flesh to this earth, with a purpose of giving his life for the atonement or forgiveness of your sin and my sin. Now, we say that's the main purpose. Yes, certainly indeed. There were a lot of other things that Jesus accomplished here and his teachings. Folks, they're more alive today than they've ever been. If you'll look and let the Holy Spirit speak to you, in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of Jesus, you're going to see really what God's, the master plan is all about. You're going to see what happened. The scripture tells us over and over in John's gospel, we learn early on that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus and that he was offered for our sins. Now Malachi and his prophecies they were two things. The love that God had for you. And also, there was a disgraceful worship of God. Now, we'd rather concentrate on the love of God, so and that makes us feel better. But you know, Jesus Christ himself, he certainly would not ignore the things that were around him. He literally would look the Pharisees and scribes and the other high-ranking high religious officials as he walked upon this earth in the aisle, and he certainly indeed would uh, tell it exact, exactly the way things were. Now, does that mean that Jesus didn't love them? Does that mean that Jesus came not for them, but he came for other people that were, were going to become believers? He came for all of us. Salvation... Is, has been made available through Jesus Christ. That has become available for all of us. So I want you to look here. We're going to read a couple verses 
uh, several verses here. I want you to skip uh, skip over here this morning. I know our time's going to get get away. Look with me at verse uh, five in the first chapter of Malachi, the last book in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Listen to Malachi as he's uh, saying or proclaiming what the Lord has told him to proclaim. This was not going to be an easy task. And your eyes shall see, and you shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. I hope this morning as you were singing, give thanks, and, and listening to the choir, and us singing the congregationals, I don't know about you, it just kind of, it, it brought me to the, to the, before the throne of God. It, it just took me to a place in which I could just feel the presence of our Heavenly Father. I could just see God opening up and saying, I love you, and I care for you. Let's go a little further here as we see. Look at verse 6. Now, Jesus taught in question form, but these are statements in which that God is making through the prophet Malachi. A son honoreth his father, rightfully so, uh, and a servant, his master. Now look at that word, if, the next word. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? Who is our father? I'm not talking about our, phys our earthly father, I'm talking about our heavenly father. And God was speaking here as our heavenly father. God's asking, where is my honor? And if I be a master... Where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest. Look, look once again. I think it's very interesting we see. And there's uh, several hundred years in between the time that Malachi and then we begin to see the New Testament begin to be lived out. And Jesus come to this world. So, here, so listen to the latter part here, verse 6. He's talking to the priest. Jesus have some struggles with how the priests were leading the people? Absolutely. Do you remember Christ coming in and he saw the, the money changers is what? I, I think that's a good King James uh, term. As he came out in the, in the courtyard there leading to the temple, he saw the lines of tables. Now, why would they need to be? People in that day and age, and even like today, if you wanted to go to uh, certain, certain places, you might go once or twice in your lifetime. They might have made it to the temple to worship. So it was, just was not practical uh, nor easy for them to bring a sacrifice. And you see, this is what you did when you went to the temple. You'd bring a sacrifice on behalf of your family to God. See, God prescribed that when you bring the sacrifice, it has to be perfect without blemish. But here we're seeing in the money changers, a lot of times they were selling things that uh, maybe that really had imperfections. They were making excess, charging excessively. Keep in mind, over 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked into his father's house, the temple, he walked into the courtyard. He saw these tables. <clears throat> and he didn't just see the tables. He didn't just see the offerings that were being offered up and, and being sold to families then to take to the high priest to then to be taken behind the, that massive veil and curtain which was still intact at that time and for the priest to offer that sacrifice on behalf of their family's sins. Jesus looked beyond and he saw the hearts and their under-the-table dealings that was going on that was certainly indeed, it did not honor God. Now, let's bring it up to 2022. Is our life honoring the Lord? Are we honoring God in a way that God is pleased? I want you to think about the bulletin here. I will not honor your second best, God, God said. We're going to see that here in just a moment here. I will not honor your best. Let's look a little further here. Look at verse 7. Uh, and look at the last part of verse 6. And you say, wherein have we despised thy name? 
Let's think about human nature. When we get to the place that maybe we're caught, and maybe we've said or done something maybe that we know that shouldn't be, what is our tendency? What? You ever had a child or somebody look at you, uh, you know, when you ask them, uh, they, got, they, they got with their, their hand caught in the cookie jar here, and you can see chocolate chip cookies all over their face. Did you eat the cookies? No. What do you think? Did people in that day not try to, to, to uh, be a people of deception? I wonder if it has not carried over a little bit to our society today. And in some ways, to a large degree. There are a lot of things, I think, that sometimes that, uh, that God is saying, and I'm sure God is saying, how could you? How could you? You know my word. You know how much I love you. You know what I've done. You know that this is what I, would, I desire for you to do and how for you to live your life. You know that's what I'm doing. And yet, if you're not careful, what do we do? We journey down that road or that path that literally was not the path that led, led us to the holiness of God. Look with me a little further here. Look at verse 7. You offered polluted bread upon mine altar, and you say, Wherein, look at what he says, Wherein have we polluted thee, in that you say the table of the Lord is uh, contemptible? In other words, you, you look and you're holding that bread that you know that is defiled or, or is not is not suitable for sacrifice or for God to honor, but yet what do you do? You still bring it to the Lord. And God said, how can you say that? How can you bring such as this and say that you did not know because in, in full well you knew exactly? Look with me here at verse 8. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, look what the scripture says. Look at the question. Is it not evil? If you bring a blind animal here to offer to God, and God's requirement was that it be perfect without blemish, and you bring this to me, to God, and God is saying, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and the sick, that which is there, this little story, as cute as it is, and you begin to think, but listen, it hits home a lot more than what many times we want to admit or to, uh, uh, or to realize because there are many times in which that we, we certainly we could offer God a whole lot better, Leon, or put your name right there beside of us. Because is that not really what God is desiring? He wants you and I every day of our lives to come to Him and to worship Him and to honor Him with our lives. Sacrifice, offerings, yes, all part of it. But listen, be careful what we're doing and what we're bringing to the Lord. Look now, offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Listen, you bring something that's, that's out of line to a king or a dictator in that day and age, you probably would not walk out of the palace uh, or wherever you brought that to because certainly indeed that king or dictator would not honor it. Why should we expect God to honor something less than your best or my best? Will he be pleased, in verse 8, the middle part, will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? In verse 9 says, And now I pray you, beseech God, that he will be gracious to us. This hath been by your means, will he regard your person, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 10 says, Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do you kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. You see what sin does, disobedience does, it blocks us. It blinds us in between God and it puts that, that wall up in between us. And certainly indeed it is there, uh, certainly indeed there, keeping us from being as close to our Lord as we ought to. What do we need to do with our sin? What do we need to do with our shortcomings? Take it to Jesus. Ask for forgiveness. Let the Lord Jesus Christ 
guide us. Let the Lord Jesus Christ show us the way. And it's not, it's not my way. Neither is it your way. It's His way. It's the way that Jesus Christ said that the way that I'm showing you leads you to me and my Father. And it leads you to eternal life. Why? Because I love you so much and a sacrifice had to be made. And, and God, God the Father sent his own, a part of Him, His only begotten Son, Jesus, to offer that sacrifice. Certainly indeed there. Malachi's charge was that they were given to God their leftovers. Don't raise your hand, but I know I could ask today, how many of you, would you rather have a freshly new cooked meal or would you rather have leftovers that have been in there the third day and there's a little questionable whether they're still good? Think about it. What do you think? How do you think God feels when you and I bring the leftovers to Him? Something that could be questionable, that we know that, it's, that it certainly indeed does not meet that litmus test according to what God's Word says of how you and I should interact with our Heavenly Father and what God said I can honor in your life and my life. Got to be careful, don't we? We need to be sure that we're doing and giving to God that which is that He deserves and folks, it's all He is. There's a clear picture of uh, what was going on in the religious life in Israel in the Old Testament days. Jesus also pointed it out in New Testament days. I think G our Heavenly Father is still trying by way of the Holy Spirit to point out in this day and age and ours. Listen, folks, it's not the huge, the huge cathedrals and so forth that is the important thing. What it is that you, you need to be sure that you're drawing nigh to God so that God can draw nigh to us. Hey, listen. The power of God in His presence right there waiting. What's He waiting on? He's waiting on you and I to get serious enough with Him that I'm, that I'm not going to, I'm going to be determined that I, in my life, others may, they may bring something less than the best to, but for me and my life and my family, I'm going to do the very best to take the best. Because folks, does God not deserve the best? For all he's done for us. Because what God has done for us means there's a day coming. I can throw this watch away. Don't have to worry about daylight savings time coming and going. What this phone that sometimes makes me pretty dumb. And I rely way too much on it. Hey, this is not going to heaven with me. Neither is this smart watch. It's not going to heaven. Why? It's not worthy. It's not worthy because the best that I can bring to God is myself. We've, you've heard me use that little illustration before. A missionary uh, was preaching and teaching and they were taking up an offering and here they were and they were passing that offering plate around and, and, and uh, this particular gentleman, he did not have a single thing to give to God. And I, I love the depiction, the act, this 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 gentleman did was that he, he simply took that offering plate and it wasn't like our nice offering plates that we have used in the past. He set it down right there where he was sitting there and it was a dirt floor. And he simply with his feet, he stepped in it and he said, Lord, I bring myself to you. What more could God ask than you and I would bring ourselves to him openly, honestly, straightforward, Asking God to forgive us of all of the unrighteousness that, that God sees in our lives or the sin. Sometimes we, we like to use that word unrighteousness, but let's, let's call it what it is. It's sin. There's sin in our lives, and every one of us have it, folks. We're all sinners, and I stand in need of the, of the grace of Jesus Christ. And without the grace of Christ, folks, I have no hope. He is my hope. He is my salvation. He is that which is going to, one day, when my last breath on this earth is, go, is taken, I'm going to lift my eyes up and I'm going to see God face to face and I'm going to fall down at His feet and worship. Folks, this is what He deserves. I want to be like this man, this missionary, had the privilege of witnessing. 
I want to be like that person. I don't want to stand before and God to ask the question, Leon, as I stand before God, why did you not, why did you bring me second best? Why did you not bring me your total self? Why did you not open up and, and to be real with me? Why did you try to camouflage or, or simply just to, to, to make matters seem something that it really wasn't? I'll promise you we might fool others. But when we we're and rest assured, every one of us will stand before God one day, and and our life is going to be the most open book you've ever seen, and there's there'll be nothing more like it because God sees us as we are, be it good or not so good. God sees it. You know what the you know what God's word is saying to us today in 2022. Open up to God and be real, be genuine. And say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of the trespasses and the things that I am doing that is an affront to you. And I want to be drawn closer and closer to you. And I want my life and the lives of those around me, I want, it, I want to walk closer to you. I want to do that. I know most of us here today, and I know a number of folks that are online, uh, most of you are Christian. For that, I say thank you, Jesus, for that. But I know as a Christian, I know that there are times in which maybe I, I have brought God second best. I've not given him my all in all. Could it be, is it you today? Could it be you? Could it be you that's listening online? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you do not, let me encourage you. Accept him today. Seek out his forgiveness and I'll promise you he'll forgive you of all sin. And invite him to come into your heart and life and he'll save you. That's the love of God. That's what God was saying, not just in the New Testament. You say it in the Old Testament too, I love you. But I want you to do that which is pleasing in my eyes, that which is right. So will you come here this morning just as you are? This altar is open. Will you come, rededicate or recommit your life? If you're here today and you're not sure about salvation, let's talk. Let's have an opportunity to pray with you. Because it's so important. If you're online with us, contact our office. I'll be happy to, to return your call and talk to you. Or we'll set an appointment. We'll meet with you. And I, I want every person that's here in us, I want to see every person in heaven one day. And the only way I'm going to see, we're going to see one another in heaven, is that you've got to know Jesus personally. And you can't, and we, we can't be doing it by, giving it by bringing the second best to God. Bring the first of the harvest. Bring your life to him here. Let's stand as we sing a hymn of invitation. Will you come? so much for your presence here today those that are visiting with us we're so glad to have you come back and be with us anytime you can if we can help you in any way please let us know uh, please come uh, ready next week just say thank you Jesus this is what we want this tree to remind us to say thank you Jesus we'll give you an opportunity if you'd like no pressure we're not asking everyone to do it but if you'd like to just say I, I, want, I just want to thank the Lord today for whatever he's doing in your life Come prepared to do that. And that's, this is going to be a special service. We're going to come there. And, if, uh, and I'll be prepared. If I, need to, if I need to fill in a little bit here, I'll be ready here for that. But thank you for being here.
Thank you for as we gather together to worship. Bow with me if you would. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day, the time we have together, the privilege, Father, that we have of just being in your house and worshiping with our brothers and sisters here in our community and, and with some that are all over the United States, maybe other places that are listening online. Lord, I thank you because it, Father, it's a blessing that we're able to unite our hearts together and worship you. Lord, help us not to, uh, for it not to be so easy for us to bring you the second best. Lord, I want, I want to bring you everything that I am and Lord, that which is not in accordance with your will, I want to get rid of it. I want to ask forgiveness. So Lord, uh, Lord, we want to bring to you and to do that which we know your word says to us. Lord, now as we go our separate ways, put that hedge of protection around us, keep us safe, bring us back at the next appointed time that we may be able to come here to your house and just sit down and maybe share a, and share a meal together this Wednesday, and but also, Father, to be able just to fellowship one with another, that we're going to be drawn closer to you. Lead, guide, and direct, Father, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful remainder week. May the Lord bless. God bless you.